PSG1 shooter here doing a video called Know Your River. This is for my subscribers and viewers who are boating enthusiasts and for those of you who've watched some of my videos of jet boating on rivers. If you've ever wondered how I'm able to go a hundred miles from home on a river I don't know anything about and run it with confidence, here's a video on how I do it. First resource I like to use is Google Earth. This is a very invaluable resource. Anybody that's out in a boat running unfamiliar rivers, I'm going to zoom in here on my home state. One of the first things that I like about Google Earth is all the photographs that people post to it on Panoramio. And right here, I'm going to zoom in just below Chiral on this rock shoal. And as you can see here, there's a picture of that rock shoal from someone else, and then there's my picture next to it. This gives you an idea of what a river looks like with a photograph as well as a satellite image. So I'm going to zoom out a little further and move up toward Blewett Falls Lake. One of the other things I like about Google Earth is that you have the historical image setting. Uh, so you can track it back through various images taken throughout different periods and you can see how the uh, water level varies. It'll show you exposed rocks on lower levels that may be covered up on higher levels. As you can see here there's some small rapids on that river that would otherwise be covered on high water. So that's one thing I like about that. Uh, just to illustrate that point a little further, I'll go a little closer to home here. And this is on the Little Petey River. This will be near the area of Gunners Island. Very shallow through here. Very tricky to navigate. You just about have to have a jet boat most of the time. Outboards, you're constantly on sandbars. As you can see right here, some exposed sandbars. Now I'll roll back through the historical imagery and you can see the sandbar is exposed there but at that point it's covered. And it's important to pay attention to the dates and I'll show you why in just a minute. You can see it's really out right there. So again, the historical imagery of Google Earth will show you various river conditions at various water levels if you use another resource that I'm going to talk about here in just a second. We'll do one more just to show you one more example of what I'm talking about. This one here is at Highway 34 near Darlington County. I call it the Highway 34 Rapids. It's basically a set of rapids that's really out of place because it's the only one for the next 40 miles until you get upstream to Chiral. But as you can see here, there's nothing showing. Looks like a normal stretch of river. Nothing there nothing there. But when I roll it back here, this was taken at a lower water level in 2009. If I zoom in, what is that? That's a stretch of rapids. And there's actually been a couple of people that have died in those rapids there trying to go through them. So very dangerous. It's important to know stuff like this. So Google Earth, very good resource for boaters. The next resource I'd like to discuss is NOAA's Southeast River Forecast Center. This is a very good one. It may take a minute to load, but when it does, you'll see a lot of little green, orange, yellow, red, and even purple squares. Each one of these squares is a gauging station on a river. And if you move your cursor over these gauging stations, you'll see a small thumbnail that'll pop up that'll show you the current conditions. Okay, we see one here for the PD River. There's Chiral. Now if you actually click on the thumbnail it will pull up that gauging station in a separate window. You can see the flow in cubic feet per second as well as height in feet. You can see the historical highs and historical lows and if you match and interpolate that data between those historical highs and lows with the imagery on Google Earth you can come up with some information 
can also go to upstream and downstream gauges. Here we have Rockingham. You can see it was just at 11 feet. Wow, I, I can't imagine that. I've been in there on like four feet and I know what it looks like. So at 11, it's way up there. Also, the small black triangles, those show reservoir levels, such as dams. Such as Lake Murray Dam here. As you can see, it's down to 351 feet. 358, I think, is full pool. In addition to that, we have tide gauging stations along the Atlantic coast. And if I click on this one here at Myrtle Beach, you can see the highs and lows in feet. Another thing here is the historical highs and lows. If you see this one here of 9-22-1989, anybody on the South Carolina coast knows what date that was, Hurricane Hugo. So again, the Southeastern River Forecast Center is a great resource, but if you zoom out on this, it will also cover any gauging station on any river in the United States. So again, great resource to use. And one final resource I'd like to discuss for those of us who are operating in maritime environments is NOAA's Office of Coast Survey. This is a list of all the NOAA charts on the east coast of the United States from Key West all the way up to Maine. And as you can see, it's an entire listing. This is a very quick reference to go to. Instead of having to dig out charts, I'm going to go to this one here near my area, Winyaw Bay. Click here and pull up the chart. Now you can move around with it by simply clicking on an area to zoom in. I'm going to go here to the Santee Delta area. It's an area I really love. But as you can see, zooming in, you can get all the depth soundings. It shows all the small creeks. You can also click and drag the cursor around. Here's the South Santee River. See the depth soundings through there. Again, that's jet boat territory. You can jump up here to Winyaw Bay really quick and show you. Shows the entrance channel going into the port, all the markers leading into it, all the soundings. And basically, any chart that NOAA has on the east coast of the United States, you can pull up on this resource here. Again, this is really good because if you're trying to dig through all your charts to find stuff, it's time consuming. Also, GPS is very time consuming. So, to sum it up, while I'd like to be able to tell you that I can go to a river and run it because I'm just that good, the truth is, I'm not just that good, and no one really is. So I don't advise running a river without having good information. And so hopefully these three resources that I've shared with you will be informational and put to good use. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. And until next time, this is HKPSG1Shooter signing off.